I have a counter argument to the content marketing craze that states that publicly facing content, especially on the internet, has little or no value when it comes to building a business, especially if you're looking to become a recognized expert. Hey, this is Justin Hit with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. I know you've been told for years that you, you need to be a thought leader. You need to get out there and share your message in word. Uh, but that is only part of a message if you want to become a recognized expert. And in fact, it is a message given to you by people who want you to work for free. Pay close attention. This will save you thousands of hours of time. So when I'm doing research on a topic, I'm writing for a specific audience, a specific purpose, and a specific context. If you want to be a thought leader and you write an article and publish it on your own website, that is not as credible as writing an article and having it pu published in the Washington Post or Forbes magazine. There's a difference between writing a book and writing a white paper and writing a blog post. If you're just out on social media trying to get the word out and gain exposure about who you are and what you can do, that has such little credibility because people know that there are bots out there that can do the same damn thing. So we have to be strategic about our writing, especially today with mass media. Your words are everywhere. Now, if you've been with us for a while, you know that I advocate for you to go directly to your prospect. It is better for them to get a postcard, a letter, or something in their hands one-on-one -on -one with that individual than them to stumble across your Facebook post. Now, you still may have content on Facebook and social media platforms because when you do long form copy and you have that broken up by staff and then distributed on these other networks, all pointing to a lead generation page, that's how you build your list so that you can deliver content within a environment that is your own media. Now, when you understand this media concept, you'll realize that Google uh, Ad, you know, AdWords platform, uh, Facebook, their advertising platform, they need your content to sell their advertising. It is like a television network, except they get free content rather than having shows developed. And that massive content, they have a view of, the, of your content where they know which content is valuable and which content is not. And they will promote the content that serves their purposes. Now, if you're a marketer or a copywriter, you, you end up falling out of this. If you're a lawyer and you've got legal services, you end up falling out of this because your content doesn't create clicks for the platform that you're on. So why not invest in your own platform? Now, a lot of folks are going to argue that investing in your own platform means means having a blog and publishing regular content on your blog. And that content is supposed to present you as an expert or to connect with the audience's needs. But again, if you're doing the wrong thing in that public channel, you're going to end up giving the visitor, you're giving them what they want and that builds credibility, but it doesn't engage a transaction that helps fund the content. So really all you're doing again is feeding the search engines, feeding the big tech companies. You're subscribing to the next latest and greatest tool. And then when you've written volumes of content and it doesn't do anything or you're not making any more money because of it, you'll feel disappointed. And that keeps you in a buying state where you're going to buy the next tool. Now, I'm speaking from experience here. I have uh, recently compiled 22 years of, of my content that was available in text form. Um, I have still more materials to put together. And I realized that I've written, uh, like, so for example, I'm editing something right now that's 22,000 words. It's an unpublished report that is 22,000 words in length. Now I've grabbed excerpts out of it and created articles and newsletter uh, ep uh, um, ads and other things out of it. And so it's not a waste of time, but that's 22,000 words that did not directly translate into new clients, did not directly translate into uh, uh, business opportunity. So again, content marketing is a gimmick designed for you to buy content marketing tools. It's what the shovel seller uses in order for you to buy platforms or to buy subscriptions. Once you understand that, you're going to realize that some of your content is for a prospect that, that helps them uh, justify your products or services. Some content is for a, a buyer to help them buy your products and services. And even some of your content might be delivered as a product 
for those who have already made a purchase decision and now they need the steps and the and the uh, how to in order to get the results. Now, that public facing content, what do we include in that content? Well, we include definitions, reason why, the what and the why of what it is you offer. We, we include credibility and success stories, but we do not include how to do the work. If you want copy that's persuasive, if you want copy that sells, you can't tell the person how to do the work. First off, in the context of your letter, you're not going to be able to give them enough information to do the work effectively. They might be able to get started, but they're not going to be able to do the work and get a valid, big, you know, cash positive solution. They may get new ideas, but those ideas have to move them towards a buying decision with what it is that you offer. So, for example, a lawyer who writes a book that gives you the step by step approach to bankruptcy and they sell that book online and it says, look, you can do bankruptcy on your own and here are the 15 ways of doing it. They're not helping their legal practice. Now, they could have their own reason for doing that. But they're not positioning self as an expert in bankruptcy. They're basically telling you the bankruptcy is so easy, you don't need a lawyer. So any lawyer that tries to sell it to you must be an idiot. They've got to set up the unique conditions in which bankruptcy is okay to do by yourself, but the even more conditions where bankruptcy is dangerous to do by yourself. So that's your mistakes. Uh, your mistakes report or a, a case study on a problem with uh, the very high level solution. There are even times where your how to materials will say how other people do things and then the failure or the fallback or the draft, the, the problems related to doing it that way and then offering a final solution, which is some kind of consultation or some kind of appointment. Again, we aren't writing content just to get it out there. We don't, first off, we don't know what content is going to convert until we put it in front of a qualified buyer. We also don't know who those qualified buyers are until we get them to raise their hand to self-identify as having a problem or a need. We don't know who to be talking to if we don't have a clear customer avatar. So the biggest problem I see people make is they're just writing content for the hell of writing content and it feels like they're doing something, but they're not actually getting any results. They're not actually moving the business forward. So again, we want contact for content for prospects where we're making contact with individuals, but asking them to raise their hand and identify themselves as having a specific desire, having a specific problem, or wanting more details. Then we move them over to the more detailed content that talks about how to make buying decisions. When I talk about special reports that sell, you don't nobody's going to read a special report that's 55 pages unless they know that they're in the right place and it's something that they uh, could benefit from. But even then, the report's going to show them how complex the solution is and how they need to get help with somebody who's qualified. And then it's also going to show why you're qualified to be the person they contact. Now, finally, once they've contacted you, you're going to have copy that goes to them to, to make sure you secure the sale. You don't want them to have buyer's remorse. You, you know, if you have a little bit of a backlog, you don't want them to go off to somebody else while you're waiting. You have to come back in and say, hey, congratulations for your uh, purchase decision. It's a very smart decision for these five reasons. And by the way, others who made this decision, you can reiterate the same success stories you had before, but you can show more detail in the success story. And then finally, you're going to set up expectations. So we don't write copy just to write copy. We write copy for specific reasons. We write copy to move a prospect down a sales funnel to the next step in a sales funnel. We also are setting up concepts. So you might write a piece of co copy that uh, teases about an upcoming event and why they should attend the event. And the sole purpose you're putting that copy out for is to see if anybody's interested in the event. But ultimately, it's an outline of the activity. It's going to say, hey, you're going to learn how to do X. But we don't tell them how to do it. We say you're going to learn how to in improve your writing so that you make more sales. Okay, you're not going to give them the step by step in the teaser, but in the presentation itself, you might say, hey, well, we're going to learn now how to write better copy that makes more sales. And the first thing we're going to do is this. And the second thing we're going to do is this. And finally, we're going to do that. See, you can expand on something after the, the prospect has made a commitment to be there. 
and you're almost rewarding them for the desired behavior. So we're not really uh, writing for a general audience in any case. So that's why I say, you know, having a blog really is not that valuable unless you're able to get people to your website who are qualified to read the blog. So to my public newsletter, so I have these newsletter websites, to the public site, I want people who are in the category that I can help. And then when they get into the site itself, I want them to find the specific areas in which I can help them. And then to understand the specific problems that they face and then help them see that a solution is necessary and available, but there's this next step they need to take. I don't want them to go there, get a few ideas from my site, go get a few ideas from someone else's site. I want a captive visitor. So I'm going to focus more on generating a lead. I'm going to focus more on multiple ways of following up and contacting because I don't want them to be in the crowd. I want to get them out of the crowd, bring them in the sales office, set them down, understand their situation, make a presentation, and then invite them to sign on the dotted line. Can you see what I'm getting at here? So as a copywriter or marketer, you need to help your customer understand that content is important. That gets them in the door. But now you need to help them understand what content is important for their sales objectives. OK, because there's a lot of folks out there screaming that all you got to do is write content. All you got to do is post on social media every day and you're going to get followers. But what does it really mean to have followers? Nothing, nothing. If you post on social media every day, all you're going to do is provide content for the platform to sell advertising. Now, if you do a topic testing method, for example, and you post, you've got these long form sales letters and you just extract it from the sales letters, uh, topics that you can post on. And then every post points to the sales letter. And then you notice that some posts got more clicks to the sales letter. So you promote those posts and then you have other posts that had high engagement, but no click through. You can, uh, you know, rewrite those posts and see if you can get the click through. That's called marketing. So we want to, as quickly as possible, get away from the content because content is, you can get people in India to write content. You can get people, uh, college students to write content for you for super cheap. But content doesn't guarantee conversion. You need context to focus the content in the right place for the right people. Then you need to, a call to action. That call to action takes them to the next step. So you're almost writing content just to generate a lead. You're writing content just to generate the sale. You're writing content just to uh, serve the customer who has made a commitment to you. Now, all these things could be in the same place online, but it must be obvious to the individual when they get to that page that what they're, they found is for them and that it takes them towards their outcome or objective. Frank Kern talks about this with results in advance. Rather than solving the big problem, he solves this little tiny problem that is keeping that individual from moving forward. So if you were going to sell copy, if you were writing copy to sell a car, you have to have people who are interested in having uh, a private mode of transportation. You're not selling cars to advocates of public transportation. So your public facing content would uh, would talk to somebody specifically. So if you're selling outdoor recreational vehicles, you're talking specifically about doing things in the outdoor. What could they be doing with their vehicle? How to choose the right vehicle? Um, that how to is not how to maintain and own one or how to pay for it. It's specifically uh, getting in their head the idea that they need this vehicle and all the great, exciting things they could do when they had the vehicle. That's the results in advance because before they were just kind of curious and now they're interested. And once they're interested, you move them into another world where they can choose the vehicle right for them. And that might not be content. That could be a decision tree or a selection box or a set of stories of different kinds of people and they see themselves in the different profiles and that's what vehicle they pick. Uh, there is a difference between somebody who gets a Ford uh, F50, uh, uh, Ford F150 and a, you know, F uh, Ford 450 or Ford 350. There's a difference between city driving and construct driving on construction sites. Um, you have to make sure that the context of your copywriting is focusing on that 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 reader and it's taking them to the next step again blasting content out there it feels like you're doing something it as a copywriter you can make good money selling that but it's not serving the customer to simply give them a pile of content a pile of content does nothing for sales so a quick summary 
Content marketing is designed to sell tools and services. You might discuss content marketing in order to get copywriting clients, but I believe you're going to better serve those clients if they understand that there's context and copy relevant to buying decisions or relevant to uh, where the prospect is in the sales cycle. And if you're able to go direct to that individual where they're at, you're going to get a lot more results. You're going to get better performance. You're going to be able to measure the the effort better. Now, when your clients can measure the effort better, they're more likely to come back and do more work with you because if you just give them a pile of copy or a pile of content and nothing happens, then they go find somebody else to give them another pile because the a lot of the prospects, you're, a lot of the clients don't know any better. Um, let's help them know better so that they're more discerning about their purchase. Let's help them have high functional copy, which lets us track and then ultimately, uh, they'll get more sales and have more money to pay you. So I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. Content marketing is a scam, uh, but let's not let it distract you from writing words that sell. If you have any questions about what I've covered here, you can go to www.adbriefings.co.uk. Go to the contact page ask your questions. I'll be delighted to answer them either in a, a future podcast or, uh, you know, I'll send you an email back. Uh, ultimately, we're about helping copywriters and marketers build their million dollar plus agency, an agency with repeat customers, with high ticket projects and assignments and long term results. Thanks for listening.